Discussed last night? Well, let's come to a head. I'm going to see you at once. Oh, surely. All right. I'll go directly to the point. I need your help. Yes. I can offer you $10,000. If, with your aid, I can ruin the merchants of Chinatown. My dear, it's my organization and perfected teleaudient machine. It should prove quite simple and very pleasant. When can you begin on this? At once. as I said, at the same time. All right. We must all strike together. Don't worry. We will. Isn't it marvelous? 
marvelous? After all, no one but the Chinese can do this sort of thing well. Thank you. to shut her up, then you and I can go back to work again. If Chinese merchants suspend business, logical thought indicates much profit accrued to evil rivals. Joe, well, there's your story. Somebody wants to break up the Chinese tourist trade. But who? When where of knowledge is dry, seeker after truth must thirst. Just the man I want to see, Mr. Riley. I'll bet you know all the details of the troubles. I want to know who started the troubles, which of the Tongs are fighting, are there any hatchet men, how many people killed? Now listen, Miss Wendy. In the first place, you have no business down here. In the second place, I don't know anything about these troubles. And in the third place, you shouldn't be here as I told you in the first place. Oh, but I have to know. I must get a sensational story and get it quick. Now, give me all the details you know. Captain Walters, he'll help me. Uh, wait a minute. Well? I'm Joan Whiting, Captain, representing the Clarion. I want a story of these raids. I must know what it's about, who started it, who was you killed. You get it from the desk sergeant. How are you, Foley? Hiya, Captain. Oh, you're the mayor, aren't you? <laughs> you know, that seems funny to me. I don't see anything funny about it. The meeting's upstairs, Captain. Oh, but wait a minute. You have to tell me something. I'm a reporter. Honest, I am. Yeah? He didn't believe me. <laughs> Will you quit your clowning? Mr. Tom Tew speaks. Yes, Mr. Chu. I have some very important information. My chauffeur will meet you and bring you to my apartment. Mr. Tom Chu? Yes, I'm Mr. Wilcox's chauffeur. My car's right down the street. Oh.
I think we can consider the incident by Mr. Tam Chu closed. That cub reporter of mine, Joan Whiting, has disappeared on an assignment in your precinct. I'm afraid she may be in a jam. Not that girl. Well, I know her. She'd talk her way out of any kind of a scrape. Yes, I know. But she should have been back here hours ago. I'm worried about her. All right. Don't worry. I'll put a couple of men on it. Thanks, Captain. I'll appreciate it. Andrews, where is Joan Whiting? That's just what I was going to call you about, Captain. I have every reason to believe that you know more about this than you pretend. Now, let's cut out the stalling and get on to facts. Well, you couldn't be thinking well, that. I certainly am thinking, and I'm thinking hard. Did it ever occur to you that every one of these crimes have been committed exactly as outlined in this book here? But you will be too busy to write books. Yes, and you too. Listen, Captain Walters, we're wasting valuable time. Joan's in Chinatown, I tell you, and I've got to find her. I don't know why I'm letting you loose, Andrews, but I'm going to take a chance. You have a lot of explaining to do. She isn't found. If she isn't found, it won't be necessary. Come on. Watch your step. And remember what I told you about the next victim. I'm going to check up with my men.
such a gross exaggeration. You never thought in your life. Don't you think you've caused enough trouble? This thing is beginning to get serious. I do the best I can. Now that's the trouble. I'm afraid you do. elsewhere. After all, there are other Chinatowns. Los Angeles, for instance. I haven't completed my work here. Your work isn't necessary to our purpose. White Clayton Chinatown has been totally suspended. Our stories have increased their sales. I'm afraid you're letting your personal feelings interfere. What do you mean by that? Martin Andrews. That isn't true, Victor. Your mind is so set on revenge that it's become an obsession with you. And why shouldn't it be? You and I have every cause to want revenge. Why shouldn't you feel as I do? And you suffer as I have? Perhaps. But my primary motive was a business one. I wanted to increase our sales. I've done this in San Francisco, and now it is necessary to move on. It is only your personal feelings that keep you from leaving. You understood my personal feelings when you enlisted my aid. I'm sure that they will remain the same in other locations. Leaving San Francisco will give you the opportunity of continuing with your experiment and be of great benefit to my employer. Hmm. You have given me something to think about. Yes. We shall discuss it first. I've got lumps in my head, corns on my feet, and contusions on my brain. I've nearly been murdered on five different occasions, and I'm in wrong with the police department who accused me of trying to commit suicide. Now, it's all your fault because you're trying to make a reporter out of a society editor. Now, either you keep this test in your office where she belongs and out of my life, or I'll have the law on you. Oh, 
what? So that's what. I'm warning you. And as for you, you keep out of my life. You know, you seem a little peeved. Oh, you know how Marty is, Chief. Just smiling all the time. Keep in his heart. He's really very fond of me. Yeah, and I'm fond of him. And that's why I'm going to put you in a position where you can't annoy him for a while. Oh, Chief, you're not going to fire me. Not this time. I'm going to save it and give it to you for a Christmas present. No. I'm going to send you to Los Angeles. I just received a tip that there's a woman sailing on the city of Seattle tonight that is mixed up somehow in this Chinatown business. Now, her photograph is in this envelope. It came to me anonymously. Now, you go down to the cashier, draw the money that you need, Get my things packed, Sally. I'm leaving for Los Angeles tonight. You'll stay here and watch the apartment. Yes, ma'am. Nice place you got here. Yes. Now, here's your ticket. You better keep it in case of a mix-up. Well? How long did the big fella say he was going to be gone? Why? What difference does it make? Well, it might make a lot. I want to talk to you, and I wouldn't want to be doing it when he came in. Then I wouldn't advise talking here. No? Well, I want to talk. I'm getting tired of taking advice. Advice is another name for order. I've had enough of them. Haven't you? What do you mean, Grogan? Oh, you know what I mean, Sonia. Now, if you and I were to get together, we wouldn't have to take any more orders, would we? You. Coolie. So I'm a coolie, am I? All right, sister. Then I'll act like one. Anywhere on the boat. Nonsense. It's going to make you feel any easier. You only have my cabin. 
Thanks. I feel a lot easier. Man and drink. Drink to yourself. Andrews, I'm going to tell you everything. The man is back at all of this. He's trying to wipe out the Occidental and the Oriental race. He's trying to start a new race of his own. And that man's name is. and bring Grogan here. Well, that's impossible, Chief. He's unconscious. We can't carry him. There's a watch on deck. Here. Yeah. Put three drops on his tongue. And he will recover sufficiently to walk. Now go. This is the woman I'm following. She's the American representative of the European chain store syndicate, which is trying to ruin the Chinese merchants. Nothing wrong. This is a photo of Sonia Rokoff. She's an employee of the San Francisco Chinese Merchant. I don't care who you think it is. My information comes from the city editor and he knows. It is said, no man may serve two masters. The book does not specify how many masters a woman may serve. Another sick as he'll be tomorrow. That's the third one tonight. Just be careful that he doesn't get noisy. Don't worry. He won't wake anybody. Who is that? That? It's our friend Grogan. But I thought he was dead. No, not yet. You see, I'm thrifty, Sonia. I never discard an article until I'm positive I have no further use for it. 
But why is he wearing your disguise? It is necessary, my dear. If there is any suspicion, it will fall on Grogan. Here, put this on. Later, I will rehearse you in your part. Mr. Andrews, we are faced by a serious problem. Wouldn't our best bet be to catch him as he tries to land? Exactly. And as you are familiar with this case, I'm going to ask you to help me and my men. I think we can spread a watch on deck that will be impossible for him to get through. But they couldn't have got away, could they? Beginning to look that way. Put him on the bed. Then come back in here to me. Yeah. I don't like being left alone with him either. I don't know. Potan gave it to me. Said it was a mild sedative. To use it if Grogan got nervous, excitable. That's all he said. He didn't tell me anymore. Oh, I'm afraid. Yeah, I know. I've always been scared of him, but I... I thought that you... Not anymore. He used to listen to me. He used to take orders from me. It's funny to think of that. Now. Keep him covered, Wong. Joe, see if she has a gun. Sorry, Sonia. You can put your hands down if you want. Miss Rokoff, there are a lot of questions I would like to ask you. Will you answer them now or shall I telephone for the police? I was wrong. I admit that. But what could I do? I never intended the thing to go as far as it has. He forced me. He? Who is he? I was afraid of him. We were all afraid of him. Grogan, Healy, all of us. We couldn't help ourselves, I tell you. And then when we saw what happened to Grogan, what happened to Grogan? She means to look in there. Yes. 
the old man. He was on the ship. I saw him. The old man, all right. But it's Krogan, too. I could never forget him. promised to help us in return for our protection. But we can't protect you unless you tell us the name of the man... Bomb. Like the other one, she's hypnotized. hypnotized her anyway. He was just a hired thug. Whoever did it must still be around here. this man and Miss Rokoff out of here quickly. Whoever it is who set that explosion will expect we were all killed. This lowly houseboy suggests we take these two speechless persons to jail. No. It's evident that they act involuntarily. We must get Miss Rokoff to a hospital so we can get the rest of her confession. Yeah. Take care of him. We're going to take you away from here, Miss Rokoff. Well, she's absolutely speechless. Yes, why don't you try it sometime? You will wake now. Your sleep has lasted long enough. You will wake. Sorry, Mr. Andrews. This woman is completely under the control of the person who hypnotized her. Unless you can produce that person, she will remain in this condition. No one else can bring her out of this trance. Only a specialist in psychiatry. I suggest uh, Dr. Zander of San Francisco. I don't need your help to stay here. The detective. Long. Oh, they weren't all killed. I follow Mr. Wong. You go back to the apartment. Find out what happened. Wait for me there. Has my brother learned anything? A great deal has been discovered, but not the name of a man who attacked the Chinese mercy.
May I help you, sir? <laughs> no, thank you. I'm just shopping the hour. If I should like something, I'll uh, call you. Oh, certainly, sir. We have taken Sonia and Grogan to the Shepherd Hospital. Mr. Andrews and Miss Whiting will drive to the city by the inland route. He doesn't seem to respond, Doctor. Her reactions are quite satisfactory. I fill in with important information. All Chinatown on the West Square has been closed indefinitely. It was done at the request of the merchants. The police are puzzled. I can aid the police. I tried to serve two masters. I hired Cotton because being a Eurasian like myself, he hates both the European and Asiatic races. His hatred for the Chinese is so great that he has become a madman on the subject, a madman bent on extermination. And he will succeed in his plan if his inventions are not destroyed. He has a machine which is an advanced form of television. He can see and hear what is going on in any room where he has placed what he calls a dicta visa. Dick Tavisa. Never heard of the thing. Nor has anyone else, Captain, except Potan. It is a very small contrivance which may be easily hidden out of sight. There is one in the house of Dr. Wu, and one in the home of every prominent merchant in Chinatown. For all I know, there may be one in this very room. That's a fine fairy tale. You're sure you're not trying to save your own neck? You're right, Captain Walker. I am trying to save my life. I have employed a Frankenstein monster who threatens to destroy me. And you, and you, and you, and a whole nation if he can accomplish it. Go on with your fairy tale. What kind of gadgets are these things? What do they look like? This machine you speak of. Where is it located? Can't you stop her from talking? Quiet. I'm trying. to me. I felt as if I were falling into a dream. Asleep. I'm all right now. You can't do anything. No. Not now. A psychiatrist has the advantage. Personal contact. And you're willing to lead us to this laboratory? Gladly. And you're not afraid? Of course. I am afraid. But I depend on you to protect me, Captain. Right. So what's that going to do, Governor? When this thermometer Registers 250 degrees. The order is gas to be released. This is the Dorkley's laboratory. Oh, 
that door so he can't surprise you from here. Let that burn. If he should come back and see it out, he might grow suspicious. He must remain very quiet till he returns. a deadly gas at a temperature of 250 degrees. Oh, then you knocked that Bunsen burner out just in time. So, are you all right? Don't. Come out of it. You have to. Don't you understand? If anything happened to you, I, I couldn't go on. Playing possum. It's not your turn to ask questions till you answer mine. Did you mean what you said? Forget it. I must have had a whiff of that gas myself. All clear, sir. I want 35 first and alley closed over the rack. Couldn't get in or out of it. Yes. And arrest anyone who tries without a pass from me. This at once. Mr. Wong will accompany you. Oh, but, but... There are no buts. We're going to investigate this place. But you need me, Captain. I've been all through this place several times. I want to help. And you're going to help. You heard Mr. Rokoff's description of this man, Potan. I want that description to appear in this afternoon's edition of your paper. We'll fix it so that man can't find a hiding place in this city without danger of being identified. Honest, Captain, you're smarter than I thought you were. Here, I'll give you a pass so you and Wong can get out of Chinatown. Here. No. Wong, you take it. She'll lose it. Think over what you've said to me, Marty. If you want to go back on your word, of course, there's nothing I can do about it. If you don't clear out of here, I'll make a speech before witnesses that you beg me to take back. Ladies and... Oh. Ms. Rokoff, will you show us this rabbit warren? Certainly. This way, Captain. Stop. Healy, draw those curtains. <laughs> Sit down, Grogan. There. What do you think this is a wise move? The police seem sure to come here. You're not going to advise me. Oh, no. No, you got me wrong. I only thought... You saw. So did Grover. I took steps to see that he stops thinking. Look at him. And if you make it necessary, I can arrange to put you in the same state of blissful helplessness. Oh, no. Not that. I'm here to take orders. I'm going to get you out of this jam. Then watch the street from the window yes. and take care. You shouldn't be seen. Yes, sure. Say an ancient fable of man seeking lost horse. Well? Man imagined himself horse, then go where horse would go. Well, imagining myself to be for a town, I would think I was least likely to be looked for at Sonia Rokov's uptown apartment. Detective instinct grew like beautiful chrysanthemums in your honor overhead. Captain Walters, I have a hunch I'd like to play if you'll pass Willie and I out of Chinatown. All right. And when you get out, stay out. 
I'll have my men search this place thoroughly. Miss Brokaw, I wonder if you'd let me have the key to your apartment. Of course. But why? You don't think now, that... I might be able to pick up the clue. I'll let you know if anything further develops. Thanks. I don't think you two will be of any further use here. Dr. Wu, will you please stay at your quarters where we can reach you? I'll drop you at the clarion office. Give Miss Whiting any further details that you think will aid us in the search. Does that cover it? Excellently. Miss Whiting has written a very vivid description of Victor Potan. There, Mr. Harrison. Do I get a raise? Don't bother me now. I'm busy. Coffee, boy! Coffee! He's never here when I want him. Thanks for the boost, Miss Rokoff. It means a lot. Are you still frightened? Not for myself. But I am worried about Mr. Andrews. What about him? He's gone to my apartment. He thought he might find a clue. He thought he might find Potan there. Did he go alone? No, he took Willie Fu. It is unlikely that Potan would go there. Of course it is. That's just why Potan would go there. Because it is unlikely. Martin's guessed that. Hurry, my car's outside. Look, there's a fight. Fools will kill themselves. Oh, look, Why don't they get back away from that edge? It's Martin! And Grogan. He'll kill him. Get 
Captain Walters, I'd have been out of luck. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, Doctor. Good day, Doctor. Mind to send a couple of men to your place while the girls are there. Why do that? I'll take the girls to Jones' apartment before tonight. You will not. Don't let those girls out of your sight till we capture this lunatic. Or do you rather have them spend the night at the police station? Why, well, of course not. I'll take care of them.
May we have some tea, please? Yes, Lady Jo. I don't try to forget your words. You're perfectly safe here from Potem. I'm never safe, as long as he's alive. Nonsense. Try to rest. I'll try.
Now you talk. And talk fast. I don't know where he's gone. He was crazy. Raven man. Come on, spill it. Oh, I know he got a full title, but Doc Fred Dean. He hopes to get the China out and polished you off. Take care of him, Willie. Yes, I'll let him out. Attention all cars. Stolen black coupe. California license number WS17171. Man named Potan. Tall, dark, Eurasian features. Cars number 2729. Watch the waterfront. Take no chances. Hey, wait a minute. was Poutan, the Eurasian. What, not the Chinatown killer? Yes. Well, I guess he saved the state the expense of a trial. At last. At last, we can stop chasing around Chinatown and get back to work. Now, let's see, where are we? Something about Lou, I believe. Ancient Chinese queen, honorable master, has passion for slicing off heads of male subjects. Killing all the males? Seems sort of silly. What was the idea? Poor Chinese queen has no other way of getting what she wanted. So different from modern American girl. Oh, the modern American girl gets what she wants, does she? You're wrong, Willie, and I'm gonna... Oh, Marty, you're a wow. You're the greatest detective in the world. Sherlock Holmes is a back number. Look, you're all over the front page. And little Joan puts you there. Now what I want is an exclusive personal interview with you, and I... Sit down. You're not going to get an interview from me or anyone else. You're through with the clarion. I just called Harrison and had you fired. Oh, Marty, you couldn't have... You couldn't have done that. Oh, couldn't I? Do you think I'm going to have my wife working on a newspaper? Or anywhere else, for that matter? Oh, Marty... Your wife? Yes. Well, why not? But, but, Marty... Shut up. I don't want to have any trouble with you. Ancient Queen Lou and modern American girl have much in common. They always get what they want. Slight difference in method only. <laughs> Thank you.